So here's your school locker with a combination lock. Let's take it apart to see how it works. The whole mechanism is hidden in a metal case. The part that opens and closes the lock is this curved metal stick called a shackle. One end is longer than the other, and it cannot be taken out of the case. The shackle collar is attached to its tip and follows the shackle as it moves. When the lock is opened, the collar rests on the upper stopper and doesn't allow the shackle to be pulled out of the case. The heart of the lock is the lever. This piece of metal is crescent-shaped at the bottom and attaches to the case on a pin that allows it to rotate. The lever has a slot that hides the latch. It's attached to the lever on a spring that pushes it into the slot on the shackle like a puzzle. There's also a flexible metal plate that attaches to the lever parallel to the latch. So here's the closed position of the latch inside the shackle. When we tried to take the shackle out to open the lock, the lever starts to rotate. Latch spring compresses and releases the shackle. Now the shackle can be removed and the lock is opened. At the same time, the flexible metal plate resists against the case and forces the lever back into its original position. When you close the lock, you push the shackle down. It presses on the latch and causes its spring to compress. Then the spring pushes the latch back into the slot and the lock is closed again. But we can see that we can open the lock just by pulling the shackle out. So we need a mechanism that will prevent the lever from turning freely and keep the lock closed. This is where our combination mechanism comes in. It's attached to the back plate of the lock. There's a pin with a spring and three metal discs with washers between them. Each disc has an oval notch and so-called teeth. The second and third disc can rotate independently, but the first one attaches directly to the combination wheel and will only rotate if you turn the wheel from the outside. Let's put our combination mechanism into the case. The lever is crescent-shaped at the bottom, so just the round discs of the mechanism can rotate there. The lever can only rotate when the oval notches on all three discs line up in the same position. Now, one end of the crescent can drop into these notches. So you pull the shackle outward, it makes the lever rotate. The notches on the code discs let it do that, and you can pull the shackle out and open the lock. But when at least one of the discs of the mechanism isn't lined up with the others, the lever can't rotate because the left end of the crescent at the bottom rests against the disc. Now you can't lift the shackle, and the lock remains closed. So you can operate the first disc of the code mechanism directly, but the rest will stay in place. We have teeth on each disc for this purpose. Let's take a closer look at the mechanism. You start rotating the first disc. As it makes a full circle, the disc hooks a tooth on the second disc and they start turning together. Then the second disc makes a full circle and engages the tooth of the third disc. And now all three discs rotate together. Now let's see how to line them up to open the lock. First, we need to make three full turns to get all the discs moving. The first number of our combination is 20. When we stop the combination wheel at this mark, we set the third disc in the proper position. Now we need to start turning the wheel in the opposite direction. Again, we do a full circle so that the teeth of the first disc can engage the second one. When they move together, we spin them to the second number of the combination, 10. Done. We rotate the disc in the opposite direction again and immediately set the last number. We've got number 35 here. Now all the mechanism's discs are set in the correct position. Time to pull the shackle up. The lever begins to rotate, and its lower tip drops into the notches on the discs. Once the shackle is removed, the flexible plate forces the lever back into the start position. To close the lock, you have to push the shackle back into the case. The shackle presses on the latch, compressing its spring. When the latch comes to the shackle slot, it causes a slight jolt inside the lock. It's enough to move the combination discs a little to the sides. Now, they're not lined up in a row, and the lock can't be opened without re-entering the code. For even more safety, always turn the combination wheel several times so that the discs are in completely random positions. But even if you forgot the combination to open your lock, you'll still be able to open it. Take the lock in one hand and put a little pressure on the shackle, pushing it up a little as if trying to open the lock. With your other hand, twist the combination wheel twice. Then start turning the dial slowly. When you hear a click, stop. It means the disc number 3 is in position, and the lever is trying to get into the notches on the discs. Write this number down. If the lock clicks at every digit, you are pushing the shackle too hard. If there's no click in a full circle, you're not pushing hard enough. Once you know the first number, start turning the wheel in the opposite direction. 
The rules are the same – light pressure and slow rotation. Write down the second number. Now, slowly turn the dial wheel in the opposite direction. Once disc number 1 is in position, the lock will open. And so ends the lesson for Safe Cracking 101. <laughs> Sometimes manufacturers make more than three discs. For example, there can be six of them. Now, you have to line up six discs to turn the lock. It will increase the size of the lock, but will make it more secure. The lock codes on safes work differently. Here it is. It consists of a combination dial wheel, a spring, three discs with notches, a small wheel, and a fence. The handle of the safe is connected to the lever, but you can't lower the handle completely because the fence blocks the rotation of the lever. So we have to enter the combination to remove the fence and lower the safe handle. When you spin the dial wheel, you are not spinning the first wheel, but the last one on the other side of the lock. This is because the teeth of the wheel start turning the first disc, the teeth on the first disc spin the second one, and so on. The first digit in the combination is responsible for the disc set closest to the wheel. The notch on the disc should be directly under the fence. We spin the combination wheel in the opposite direction to set the second disc in the correct position. We reverse the direction of rotation again and set the third disc in the right position. The fence can now drop into the notches. It no longer locks the lever, and you are free to press the handle of the safe and open the door. The great thing about this locking device is that the fence will not come down on the discs until they are all lined up in the correct position. So when you try to open the safe without knowing the code, the lock will not make clicks that you can use to find the right numbers of the combination. You can try to figure out the code, though. To do this, you select the first digit 1, the second digit 1, and the last one on the dial wheel. You pull the handle and nothing. Now the combination is 112, then 113, and so on. The chance of you getting the right digit for the first disc is 1 to 99, because there's only 99 digits on the dial wheel. The odds that you'll guess the correct digits for the first two discs are 1 in 9,702. And the probability that you can pick the correct code for all three discs is 1 in 941,094. <laughs> to open such a lock without knowing the combination, you'll need a drill and a small camera. First, you have to know exactly where the door's combination mechanism is and drill a hole right in front of the notches on the discs. Now you stick your little camera with the flashlight in there. We can see the disc spinning on the screen. We have to turn the dial until you see that the first disc is in the right position, then the second, and the third. It won't be easy to drill such a hole, however. Usually, safe doors are made of several metal layers with a layer of solid concrete between them. And if you do this at a bank and get caught, well then, you'll get an education as to how the legal system works up close and personal. Step 1. Get a good lawyer.